This ship, passing near the coast of Somalia, defends itself against pirates using water? Yeah, you heard it right. The crew shoots water in response to bullets. Actually, they've come up with plenty of ways to fend off pirates, but surprisingly, guns are not part of the equation. Wondering why crew staff ditched firearms and how they managed to deal with pirates without them? Let's find out. Hey there, if you're enjoying the video and you like our script, editing, and overall content, don't forget to hit that like button. It means a lot to us, and it's super easy for you. Let's keep it going. Let's start by saying that the best and most practical way to protect ships, crew, and cargo is through a well-trained armed security team. Typically, a couple of warning shots are enough to signal to pirates that this vessel is prepared to defend itself. Pirates are unlikely to take chances with their lives when there are many other, less protected ships at sea, so they'll likely retreat. The problem here is that getting armed guards to deal with sea pirates is both costly and doesn't seem like the best investment right now. Just like any weapon on any ship, there are reasons for that. Many ship owners, including those whose ships regularly sail through the waters of East Africa, still strongly oppose the idea of having any weapons on their vessels. First of all, if ships were carrying weapons for self-defense, they could become targets for attacks worldwide by people wanting to steal those weapons. And those people probably wouldn't leave the crew alive. Ship owners also don't want crews to be armed because only a few sailors in the merchant fleet have combat training. Meanwhile, pirates can always get their hands on bigger and more dangerous weapons than ship owners. In any arms race, sea bandits will come out on top since they have no restrictions when it comes to weapons. Pirates can pretty much use whatever they want. Moreover, most ports strictly prohibit ships from carrying weapons on board and changing these rules in each country would be difficult. Since a commercial vessel may visit a dozen countries during its voyage, transporting weapons would simply be impossible, even if the ban applies only to one or two ports along the route. It's also worth remembering that pirates like to target tankers, stealing fuel. Even without pirates, random fires are a constant worry for tanker crews. Do you see the problem here? According to the heads of shipping companies, if a tanker crew gets into a shootout with pirates, there's a risk of ignition, and then everyone's in trouble. And that's not even mentioning the destruction of cargo and pollution of the environment. In general, ship owners and others who care about the safety of the crew have been going back and forth on whether it's necessary for the crew to have guns for self-defense. This debate has been ongoing for a while, especially since they used to have them but decided to do away with them in recent decades, and there are plenty of reasons for that. Moreover, nowadays, people are being taken hostage for ransom, and it's easy to capture unarmed individuals. But if the crew were armed, they'd likely just be killed on the spot. Pirates would also seek revenge for their fallen comrades. The killing of three Somali pirates by U.S. Navy snipers during the rescue of an American captain from the container ship Maersk, Alabama, is a prime example. After the incident, at least one Somali pirate on shore threatened to retaliate against the next American sailor to fall into their hands. Pirates only need 15 minutes to seize a ship. That's not enough time to call for help from the Coast Guard or anyone else and wait for them to arrive. Actually, reports suggest that sea pirates tend to use the same tactics regardless of their nationality. They prefer targeting cargo ships and oil tankers, approaching them on motorboats and then firing at the bridge. Most attacks occur at dawn and dusk when visibility is low, making it harder to spot the pirates. According to statistics, in all cases when crews successfully repelled attacks, sailors noticed the pirates approaching beforehand and raised the alarm. Therefore, staying vigilant is crucial for safety, especially in known hotspots where pirates operate boldly and actively. These hotspots include the Gulf of Aden, the coast of Nigeria and the Gulf of Guinea, Southeast Asia and the Singapore Strait in particular, as well as the coast of Venezuela. Another tactic pirates use is pretending to be struggling fishermen in need of engine repairs. When a ship halts to lend a hand, they take control of it. Modern pirate speedboats come equipped with radars, sonars, and various communication tools. These raiders also might have machine guns, torpedoes, grenade launchers, and even Molotov cocktails at their disposal. They use all sorts of gadgets, and rumors suggest they might even tap into satellite communication to track down their targets. Nowadays, pirates typically target small cargo ships. These vessels are easy targets because they often have to slow down to navigate narrow straits. If pirates aim for a larger ship, they'll sneak aboard before it sets sail. But if it's a small ship, they just need to catch up and hop onto it. Then it's just a regular boarding from there. The crew and ship owners have several options to counter these threats. 
One key point is that the area surrounding a ship can be divided into four zones, and the actions of the crew will vary based on which zone they detect pirates in. The first blue zone is the early detection. It's when you realize there are pirates nearby your ship and you start getting ready in case you have to deal with them. If you spot pirates in the second, green zone, you still have a chance to avoid a confrontation. You can maneuver or sail away as fast as you can. When pirates are spotted in the third, yellow zone, the goal is to prevent them from getting close to the ship. Finally, in the fourth, red zone, the crew must do everything in their power to stop them from boarding. Water cannons are commonly used against pirates in the yellow zone. These non-lethal weapons are a common feature on trading vessels. They work by blasting powerful and relentless jets of water, knocking down pirates attempting to board the vessel. The cannons can also quickly fill pirates' boats, slowing their movement and making maneuvering difficult. Most of these cannons are remotely operated, keeping the crew out of harm's way. Effective water cannons can shoot as far as 300 feet, ensuring that every inch around the ship is covered. This makes it impossible for pirates to approach, and most likely it'll discourage them from targeting the ship. Some water cannons can spray up to 1,320 gallons per minute at pressures of up to 10 bars. That's enough force to knock a person off their feet if they're not stable. Plus, these cannons are also highly effective for firefighting, further enhancing overall ship safety. Similar self-defense tools include ship fire hoses or special anti-piracy fire hoses, which the crew often relies on. These high-pressure water hoses are extremely powerful and effective in dealing with pirates. Special anti-piracy fire hoses also come with a semi-automatic system and remote control. Another tactic involves using a newly patented hose to spray water. This hose, when water is sprayed from its nozzle, moves unpredictably using very little water. While the pressure isn't too high, the hose's movements are so chaotic that they can seriously injure anyone in their path. And don't forget, the water spraying in different directions and getting into pirates' eyes is seawater, meaning it's salty. Not exactly a pleasant experience, especially considering the pressure. This method is often referred to as the anti-piracy curtain, although perhaps it would be more aptly named the crazy hoses run for your life. At times, pirates are fended off with similar tactics used against certain sea animals such as orcas and other marine life that come near ships. Take for example a long-range acoustic device. It's a non-lethal gadget that emits a sound beam causing significant discomfort. This sonic weapon produces a high-frequency noise surpassing the tolerable threshold for the average person. Simply put, listening to it is really unpleasant. The system looks sort of like a spotlight with sounds concentrated in a narrow beam that can be easily aimed at the target. It's like yelling at the pirates with great precision. Instead of yelling, we could just use a laser. Not like someone's gonna try to fry pirates like Superman, of course. This tool is non-lethal and can warn pirates within a range of up to 1.2 miles that they've been spotted and aren't welcome here. At closer ranges, a laser can really throw off attackers, making it hard for them to aim and shoot effectively. It's kind of like a fighter pilot swooping in from the sunny side. The bright laser light messes up their targeting, but it's only for a short time. Still, it gives you a chance to call for help or get ready to defend against boarding. So let's say those pirates aren't backing down and are actually attempting to board. They're sort of sizing up how to get on board, and that's when it's time to pull out some other deterrents, like an electric barrier encircling the ship, making sure those pirates can't sneak aboard. This barrier can be folded up for safekeeping until it's needed. It's usually equipped with sirens and spotlights to sound the alarm if anyone tries to climb over it. However, this barrier still works effectively even without a siren because it delivers shocks of 8,000 or even 10,000 volts. After such a shock, it's incredibly difficult to remain on board the ship, causing boarding attempts to fail. And if someone gets shocked while still in the water, oh, and it's worth mentioning that there are not only electric fences, but also regular fences extending beyond the ship's edges. They stop pirates from putting up ladders, so basically serve the same purpose, just without the spark. There's also this slippery foam stuff that, surprise, makes the ship's deck or side slippery. This makes it impossible for pirates to get a grip, set up a ladder, or do much of anything. Trying to walk on surfaces coated in this stuff is like trying to skate on ice, except you feel more like a clumsy deer with legs splayed out. As a bonus, you can splash the slipping pirates with a sticky, foul-smelling green liquid. However, it's also used as a standalone means of protection. Not only does it stink, but it also burns, so the pirates end up taking a dive to wash it off while the ship sails away smoothly. 
Another option is using a razor wire canister. It might sound odd, but it actually does the trick. You attach several canisters to the ship's rails or bulwarks on both the port and starboard sides. Typically, they're spaced about 50 to 60 feet apart, which might seem like a lot, but these canisters really do the job. When activated, each canister ejects 65 feet of barbed wire overboard, which is swept back by the speed of the ship. This creates a barrier stretching from the main deck to the waterline, making it really difficult for pirates to get past it. All that defense is set up above. Down below, there's a P-trap waiting for the pirates. It's a system of thin ropes floating at water level on either side of the ship. When the pirate boats get close, these ropes entangle the propellers and rudders, messing them up and bringing them to a standstill. A similar idea is used in a ballistic net designed to stop pirate boats approaching a merchant ship. Once it's in the water, the net entangles the boat's propellers, bringing them to a sudden stop. Oh, by the way, since we can shoot water at pirates, why not shoot air? All right, these cannon-shaped devices just use compressed air to shoot various projectiles. The power of the projectiles can vary depending on how far the pirates are from the ship, and there are quite a few types. For instance, take a flashbang grenade. It's pretty straightforward. You aim it at pirates, it goes off with a bright flash and loud bang. It won't cause any serious injuries, just temporarily disorient the pirates. Another type of grenade contains rubber balls that spread out in various directions upon detonation. With a blast radius of around 50 feet, they can affect multiple pirate boats. Plus, they come with a bright flash and loud bang, giving you a two-in-one punch. And how do you like this thing called the Pain Ray? About 20 years ago, the Pentagon announced the development of this non-lethal weapon designed to inflict excruciating pain. Originally intended for military use, the Pain Ray is now being used to protect commercial ships. This weapon emits a narrow beam of electromagnetic energy to heat the skin without causing permanent damage. The wave penetrates beneath the skin, causing an unbearable burning sensation, forcing pirates to flee. Essentially, it's like a giant directed microwave. <laughs> and it's about 50 degrees out here right now, but I just felt like it was about a thousand. However, if none of these measures are found on board for some reason, there's one last resort, the Molotov cocktail. While not considered high-tech weaponry against piracy, several merchant crews have resorted to using Molotov cocktails to fend off pirates. For instance, in a desperate situation, Chinese sailors use them when attacked by Somali pirates. While Molotov cocktails are technically illegal, sailors didn't have many options. If you've never heard of them, it's basically a homemade incendiary weapon made by filling glass bottles with flammable liquids like gasoline and sticking a cloth fuse on top. Molotov cocktails could be hurled at approaching pirate ships to set them ablaze and disrupt their movements, but they could easily become deadly weapons. However, it's worth noting that some ships do seek help from private security firms. However, they don't hire them for permanent security. That brings about too many problems, as mentioned earlier. They only use them for dangerous zones. Specially trained armed personnel fly in and join the ship before it enters high-risk waters and stay on board until the coast is clear. Once the threat is gone, the guards get off the ship and they have no problems with authorities and ports. The only ones who have problems are the pirates who try to raid such ships. See you later.